In today's video, we're talking about conspiracy. Not the conspiracy about who killed JFK or whether we went to the moon or not, but a criminal charge in Arizona known as conspiracy. We'll talk about how it works. We'll talk about what the penalties are. So let's dive into the statute. Conspiracy is considered a preparatory offense in Arizona, which means you don't actually have to commit the offense or you don't actually have to physically be involved in it. If you help in some way, if you help prepare for it and you help put it for forward, not actually to completion, but just put it forward, that might be enough to be charged with conspiracy. And it can be a very serious charge. So let's take a look at the statute. It's defined by ARS 13-1003. If you plug that number into Google, you should pop up with a conspiracy statute. And let's see what it means. So there's really three parts that need to be in play in order for somebody to be charged or convicted of conspiracy. The first part of it is that a person who is charged with a conspiracy has to have shown an intent to promote or aid in the commission of the offense. So they need to be intentionally promoting it or intention, intentionally aiding in, in furthering the commission of the offense. So if they don't have any intent to do it, if they do it haphazardly or they do it unknowingly or they have no idea that they're involved in it, that's not gonna meet that element. They have to have the intent, they have to intentionally want to promote or aid in the, in the commission of the underlying offense. Once that's met, they also have to have the following. They need to have an agreement with one or more persons that one of them, either them or someone else, is going to engage in conduct that will constitute an offense. So that means that the, the people who are communicating, the people who are having an agreement with one another, that somebody's going to do something in furtherance of the underlying offense. So let's say it's, it's conspiracy to commit a theft. They're going to conspire to steal a vehicle. One person, whether it's the person who's locating the vehicle, it's the person who is identifying the vehicle, it's the person who is actually stealing the vehicle, the person who is storing the vehicle, all of those people are in agreement. But as long as one of them takes some conduct, takes some action that is going to com constitute a portion of the offense, there's an agreement there. And then finally, someone who is involved in this conspiracy is going to have to commit an overt act in furtherance of the offense. So that means somebody has to do something in furtherance. They may not have to complete it all the way, but they have to do something in furtherance of it. So this is different. You can distinguish this from a group of people who are just sitting around talking about it. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to rob a bank one day? Sure, I'd love to have a million dollars. That's not a conspiracy because nobody's actually taken anything, taken any overt action to push it forward, to take it to the next level. But if somebody goes out and buys ski masks and somebody gets the blueprints for the bank and somebody buys some weapons and somebody devises a plan and somebody plans on cutting the alarm, that all is going to be overt acts in furtherance of it. It needs to be something that is going to help move that crime forward. If that doesn't exist, then there's no conspiracy. There are a couple of exceptions. So we certainly do not want in the law, we do not want to push people into doing things that's gonna constitute harm on somebody else. So you do not need this element. You do not need an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy if it's going to be a crime upon a person, like an assault or like a murder. You don't want somebody to start murdering somebody in order for a conspiracy to start. So you don't need that overt act. You also don't need it if it's a first degree burglary or if it's arson. So those two other things, we don't want the law to say that you can get away with conspiracy if, uh, if, you, if you don't do one of those things, or you must do one of those things in order to be charged with a conspiracy. We're saying, we don't want you to do any of that stuff. So we don't want you to do anything in furtherance of a first degree burglary, an arson, or any crime against another person. That's not required. That element's not required for somebody to be charged with conspiracy. A couple quick points we want to make note that you do not have to know the identity of the person who's involved in the conspiracy. You just have to know of the conspiracy. So if A, B, and C are all agreeing that they're going to do something, A and B are the only ones who know each other. A doesn't know who C is, but A knows that there's probably somebody else involved or that there is somebody else involved and that C is going to go do something. A is now a party to that conspiracy. So is C. Just the fact that A and C have never met doesn't immunize them from the conspiracy. The other thing is that multiple offenses 
are all going to be part of the same conspiracy if they're related to the same underlying offenses. So a person's not gonna be charged with 25 counts of conspiracy if they're all related to 25 things that are all centered around the same agreement. So if they're all gonna rob the bank, they're not gonna be charged with conspiracy to cut the alarm, conspiracy to uh, blindfold the, the teller, all of those things. It's all gonna be one conspiracy about that generally underlying uh, agreement to commit that bank robbery. And then finally, it's important to know that conspiracy is going to be classified in terms of what level of offense it is based on the most serious charge from the underlying conspiracy. So in that case, it'd probably be, be armed robbery of a bank, okay? If it was a murder, it's gonna be the murder. It's not gonna be the breaking and entering. It's not gonna be the kidnapping portion of it. It's gonna be the murder because that's the most serious part of that underlying agreement. So conspiracy is going to be a separate charge and it's going to rise to whatever the most serious classification is. The most serious charge that's in the whole batch of underlying charges, it's gonna to rise to that level. So conspiracy is very common. They'll tack it on to a lot of other charges, things like organized retail theft, uh, a lot of different theft charges, forgery charges, any laundering charges. They'll put a conspiracy on there because there's generally multiple people involved. Any offense that has multiple people is a ripe type of case for conspiracy if it involves all of these things. There are many, many defenses that you can bring up to not only attack the underlying charges, but really whether there was a conspiracy or not. A lot of this can be a little bit gray. It's not necessarily black and white if there actually was an agreement, if there actually was intent, whether there was an act that is an overt act in furtherance of it. We'll talk about defenses to conspiracy, but more importantly, if you've been charged with conspiracy, if you know or love somebody that is facing a conspiracy charge, it can be extremely serious. So make sure you give us a call. We offer free case evaluations. We'll have you come into the office. We'll review the facts of your case. Make sure you have an understanding of how this all works as it pertains to you. Make sure you have a plan. Give us a call. We look forward to working with you and speaking with you soon. Thanks for watching.